We're joined now by the Palestinian ambassador to the UK, Hussan Zomlot. So, very good afternoon to you. Um, so, Alistair Bunkel and was telling us there, quoting uh, the Israeli media, saying around 600 Israelis have been killed in these uh, attacks. Uh, will you condemn the onslaught by Hamas? obsession with uh, condemning the victims and blaming the victims and uh, co condemning the occupied, the colonized, the besieged uh, for so many uh, years. And this uh, morally abhorrent uh, approach of always talking about Israel's right to self-defense, uh, uh, that Israel is under siege. I saw your title uh, all the last uh, hours, uh, as if there is a war. Uh, this dehumanization of Palestinians has got to end and stop immediately, especially that lives are being lost, and this is very tragic uh, and uh, regrettable. So please don't stop uh, 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 always your interviews by asking this question. Uh, I will the, not, the, the, the trouble I will is, not though, indulge. The... I will not indulge in this. Two million people in Gaza have been taken hostage by Israel for the last 16 years. 16 years. Have you ever asked an Israeli spokesman or official to condemn that? Have you asked an Israeli official to condemn what their prime minister said yesterday, that he will bombard civilian areas? Have you, have you asked or expect the Israelis to condemn what they do in Jerusalem and occupied Jerusalem and the West Bank? So stop this. There is no symmetry between the occupied and the, and the, and the occupier, the colonized and the colonizer. Enough. These attacks, though, will do nothing, will they, to, to stop the occupation? We, uh, Gaza is now facing a prospect of, of a ground invasion by Israel. So your, the desired effect hasn't worked. Because this also fuels into the whole thing. Uh, and all the official statements from the US, the UK, uh, that Israel is going to do this and that, and the, now they will bombard the entire Gaza. Israel must be told by the international co community that it has to respect international law, that it as a an occupying force has the full absolute responsibility to protect civilians under its occupation, not to target them, as you have seen in the last hours in Gaza, bombarding entire residential compounds, wiping out entire families sleeping in their homes. The world must understand that this isn't about some clashes here and there. This isn't about Hamas. This is about a people, more than 13 million Palestinians inside and in the refugee camps outside that have been subjected to oppression systematic for the last 100 years. And it started here in the UK when the UK gave on a silver plate Palestine to the Jewish immigration. And it continues, it's and it to, continues to until now. It continues, Nick, it continues this denial this denial that our people are fighting for their lives. Literally, I called my nephew this morning. My sister lives in Gaza. I called her and then my nephew picked the phone and he said, uncle, you know what? We're dying anyway. So this is the situation in Palestine right now. And the world is responsible in having my nephew thinking this way and having 13 are, are million people in Gaza. Ambassador, are people in Gaza now braced for, for what might happen? What has been happening for them uh, for the last so many decades is horrible, is unimaginable, is unbelievable. This is the biggest open air prison on earth. And every once in a while, Israel visits them with uh, its uh, fire, uh, uh, huge fire from air, from sea, from land, killing thousands. They are un un unable to travel, to work, to hope, to aspire for anything. You're talking about generations, Nick, generations. And should I tell you about the people in the occupied West Bank? It's even worse. What are they subject? Their land is being uh, confiscated. They are now subjected not only to the Israeli army uh, brutality, but to the settler militias in Hawara, in Nablus, in Al-Khalil, Hebron, in, uh, of course, uh, Jerusalem. You've seen what happened in Al-Aqsa Mosque. You've seen the spitting on Palestinian Christian worshippers only last week. This is a system of racial domination on the top of a military occupation uh, compounded by colonization pure racism the palestinian people have the right the right to defend themselves they okay have, ambassador let, let's have, turn let's have, turn to what we have the right to now. shout out and we have the right let's, to say enough
let's turn to Palestinians calling for a, a meeting of the Arab League. What, what influence can, can the Arab League have on this? Big influence. Uh, and, and that's exactly what should happen. We are concerned. We are worried. We want the Israeli killing machine to stop. We know who's in government in Israel now. We know the likes of Netanyahu, Ben-Gvir, Smotrich. Those are supremacists. Those are capable of committing genocide, Nick. Genocide. And that's what they are preparing for. So we need wisdom. We need statesmanship. And we need the international community, starting with the Arab League. So we are looking forward to the Security Council to enforce international law equally. Israel has grown for 75 years accustomed to the fact that it is the exception to the rule that it is above the law, that it has complete immunity granted by the US, by the UK, and the rest of the West. This is about time that we learn the lessons and we stop repeating the mistakes and we stop dehumanizing the Palestinian people. We are a people under oppression. We seek freedom. We seek independence and sovereignty. We seek to take back our land. Israel must just get out. Get this out is, this is, of this is yeah. The, the, this they're, they're not going to get out as you put it yet. This is going to go on for a long time, isn't it? You asked me about the Security Council. The Security Council decided 56 years ago in 1967 that Israel has got to leave now immediately. You asked me about the United Nations, numerous UN resolutions that Israel is committing violations of international law, war crimes, crimes against humanity. You asked me about the international community, Amnesty International here, Human Rights Watch in the US. Every major international human rights organization confirms that Israel commits the, 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 the crime against humanity of apartheid, of a system of racial uh, segregation. So the world for so many years, decades, 75 years, is not heeding us. And the world is trying to bypass us. And you are seeing what happened. Since we signed the, the Oslo Accords, we, the Palestinian National Movement, have committed an iron way to our own commitments to recognize Israel, to commit to negotiations on nonviolence, and thirdly, to commit to international resolutions and international legitimacy. Israel was expected to end its occupation, was expected to uh, stop its colonial expansion. It has never done so one time since we signed. 30 years ago, every day there's a new settlement. Every day there is a new expansion. And the world okay, has, right. has um, failed we'll, has we'll, failed um, miserably. We'll have to leave it there. Time, last, time, last, time last, is against la, us. Last, we will last, see. Sent last sentence. This is an opportunity. We this is an opportunity for the world to wake up and resolve this issue that that will be the beginning of stability in the region and worldwide. Ambassador, thank you very much indeed for your time on Sky News today.